Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Biblios Dice. So I think probably the main question everybody's gonna have right off the bat is this or Scripts and Scribes Dice? Which one should I get? Or, I already have Scripts and Scribes Dice, should I get Biblios Dice? And fair question, I'd be wondering the same thing myself. <sighs> now don't get me wrong, Scripts and Scribes Dice is a great, great game. I mean, we really thought it was very, very cool, but for us, we felt, you may you can go back and check my run through, we felt that it suffered a little bit as a two-player game because there just wasn't as much excitement or attention as there should be. There wasn't as much competition on the various tracks. The uh, auctions you know, could have used a little bit more zazz. And so for that reason, I gotta say, as a two-player game, Biblios Dice blows the socks off of Scripps and Scribes Dice just because of the addition of Brother Cadwell. He is so great. I mean, I, mean, I know he's just total random, you know, random roll of the die and luck of the draw to determine what he's going to do. But I swear, sometimes it feels like there's an actual intelligence behind him because of the way the rolls just happen to go. That He just keeps focusing on things and he, he's the first to grab these victory points that I really want and I was literally racing him even though he doesn't exist. I mean, I think that's it's just so well integrated and so it creates as a two-player gameplay all the excitement and tension you get in a three-player game and that's fantastic. It makes the auctions more exciting, it makes the uh, area majority or you know the, the the progress tracks more exciting and I mean it's just stellar. He and he's so easy to do. He's just roll a dice, you know, roll a couple dice or three dice at the beginning of every round and draw two cards during an auction. Brilliant. So many developers could um, learn a lot, I think, from how, I mean, like, I, I think of Zolkin, the Mayan calendar, which a big, big part of Zolkin is, you know, working your way up these kind of progress tracks and trying to be at the top of it. And in a two-player game, you know, I, it works fine, but oh my gosh, if Zolkin had something like this, so the two-player game, there was still somebody else to compete with, oh, it'd be so fantastic. So, I, I, as a two-player game, this is leaps and bounds above Scripps and Scribes Dice. Now, for other players, well then, you know, if that's not really your concern because you have more than two uh, to play with. Hmm. Well, there's interesting. There's definitely some interesting uh, changes that have been made. Probably front and center, one of the biggest ones is the notion of this donkey that you can see is slowly working his way towards town, working as a countdown for when the next auction is going to happen. I definitely think that's an improvement because in Scripps and Scribes Dice, you just had that control die, and um, every once in a while, it just happened to, when it rolled at the beginning of every round, it would say, well, this is going to be a regular round. Oh, no, no, this is going to be an auction. And it was totally random. And, you know, you could go a long time without having an auction. You could have multiple auctions back to back. Auction, the luck of the auction could definitely benefit one player over another. I mean, it was fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But I think I definitely enjoy this more. Being able to plan and anticipate, you know, and like, oh, you know, here it is. And oh, crap, I rolled a three. If we're going to have the auction. I'm not ready. I need a little bit more money because there's three bucks lying here. Okay, well, I'll lose a victory point so I can get, so I can um, re-roll this. And hooray, now it only, oh no, it's a three again. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I, I, I just think, this, the notion of building towards an auction, is implicitly more interesting. It gives you another thing to think about, another thing to balance as you prepare for that auction. Um, you know, it, that money could become more or less interesting to you. So I think that's a very, very cool addition. There's another big change, which is, you know, previously money and victory points were the same thing, but now they're separate, and um, I don't know how I feel about that. I, I think either way is perfectly fine. So I think you know that's six and one half a dozen the other. But the other big big difference between this and Scripts and Scribes is the way the auctions work. Now Scripts and Scribes has two types of auctions. This one only has one. And I gotta say, all three of these auction types are fantastic. They are so cool and amazing and exciting. I love Scripts and Scribes. The one was a reverse Dutch auction kind of thing, and the other one was real time. Man, I loved that real time auction. That was so exciting. All the uh, anticipation and uncertainty, but the pressure. No. The time is running out. Oh, that was so great. But this is so great too. This whole notion of, okay, I can start to anticipate what do I think somebody's going to bid and we reveal the same time and, oh crap, now we're going to go to another round. Do I bid high? Do I bid low? Do I bow out now? Do I buy out now because I'm already four bucks ahead and I know all Jen's got is a five. Is um, you know, is she going to bid that five or is she going to bow? I don't think she's going to bid. So I'm going to bow out early and then boom, she put, you know, I, there's so much interesting um, thought that goes into every round of this auction because you are bidding blind 
but you do have a knowledge of what has come before and that just works so well these auctions are very very cool and again you know brother cavill works fantastically in them uh, as a two player game so uh, all the auctions are great it's interesting i think because of that I don't think this replaces Scripts and Scribes. If you really love the entire vibe of Biblos, you can think of this as a variant. It's another way to play Scripts and Scribes the Dice Game, where the primary thing is, hey, we've replaced those auctions with a different type of auction. So, um, you know, I think it's worthwhile if, again, if you have multiple players, because Scripts and Scribes suffered at two players, I thought. If you have three or more players, it's worth having both, because sometimes you'll want, you, know, you, you could go for having this type of auction, this kind of semi-blind bid, or you can play the other one, where you have the Dutch auctions and the real-time auctions. They're all very, very cool, and you know they all provide a different experience on the same framework that works so well. So, but anyway, for me and Jen, I mean, because we were two players only, Biblios Dice is a must-have because a game that works well, really, really well with two players that is all about auctions is something to cherish and love, and we love this. Still not quite as good as his big brother, but, you know, honestly, I mean, you know, Dr. Finn, you know, Steve Finn, you know, the, the developer behind this game. I mean, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. He is the king of fillers. He just keeps putting out great game after great game after great game. He just publishes it himself. You order them direct from him. And um, I would actually at this point say, while Biblios is still his top and end, his, you know, better than Gunrush, better than Kappa to Copy, better than, um, you know, Let Me Tramp, all these things. While this is his top, this is now his second. It hasn't eclipsed. It's Big Brother, but it's nipping at its heels because this is fantastic as well. Absolutely stellar game. Love them both to death. And that's it, folks. That is uh, Biblio Size. Now, like I said up front, you know, the links for this are in the show notes down below. And there's also a link for it right there on the screen right now if you'd like to go to the Kickstarter page and learn more, see what the final components look like, see what you're And also, as always, whenever Dr. Finn does Kickstarter campaigns, he always gives opportunity to get other, his earlier games as well. So you might want to go check that out as, because he's just got this fantastic library. Absolutely love him to death. If I ever do a top 10 favorite designers of me and Jen, uh, Dr. Steve definitely has to go on the list. He's just that good, and this game is just that good. Okay, folks, and that's it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Um, any mistakes I made, please point them out. They will get noted. And otherwise, I'm going to end it right there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Talk to you later. So long. Have a good day. Oh, bye bye.